During the 19th century, England was terrified of one man so much that it seemed that he was not a man, but a ghost. He certainly operated like one. No one, and we mean no one, got out of his clutches. No one made it out alive. Who was this man, and why was he so horrifying? Find out in the latest episode of Big Facts. Jack the Ripper. The most famous serial killer in history. One thing we can get out of the way, even if these are historical accounts, they are all real. None of this is a made-up horror story. It is the work of Jack the Ripper. So who exactly was Jack the Ripper, and what could he have done that was so bad that he still remains one of the most popular serial killers of all time? Is he worthy of this title? Well, let's find out. The entire horrifying ordeal began on August 31, 1888, and it began with the body of a woman named Mary Ann Nichols. Well, her murdered, cold, dead body. She used to live in a common lodging house and was found in a horrible condition by someone who lived there as well. It had only been an hour since her murder. As for the condition in which her body was found in, uh, prepare yourself. It's a traumatic account. Her throat was cut almost to the bone. The two cuts that were on her neck were made with such force that one cut almost tore the tissue down. But unfortunately, this was not the end of it. The lower part of her abdomen, where intestines are located, were ripped open by a deep and jagged cut. And even this is not the description's end. Apparently, Jack had a lot of time on his hands. As he did not call it a day here, he created a lot more cuts to the right side of her abdomen with the same jagged knife. A little good news, these wounds were made in a frenzied downward manner, which meant that Jack hadn't been meticulous or patient with her death. He just stabbed quickly, which means that she died quickly. It is way better than bleeding her out like a lot of serial killers do. But how do we know that it was indeed Jack who had killed her? You'll see that it'll become impossible to think otherwise. The story progresses like this. The public was relaxing. It had been a while since people had died of anything other than tuberculosis, which meant that they forgot that someone amongst them had ravaged a woman's body and escaped. And this relaxation did not come months after the murder. It came one week after. Because just after seven days, Jack the Ripper struck again. This time, his victim was Mary Chapman. Her body was located in the early morning time in the same condition as Jack's first victim, Mary Ann. Two horrible lacerations to the throat, which almost exposed the bone and the rest to the body was ripped apart. But unfortunately, Jack had taken his sweet time with this one. No, he did not realize that he was taking a human life and call a doctor. He utilized his time in a very interesting manner, by removing her intestines. We are obviously disgusted at the mutilation and horrified and, and everything, but to be honest, we are mostly confused. Why? Just why? Her intestines were found out of the body. This murder would also provide the first apparent sightings of this man who had terrified the entire country in one week. But the insight into who the murderer was wouldn't do anyone good. An eyewitness simply said that she had seen the victim with a man in a very dark overcoat and hat. They were both chatting. But guess what? This was literally everyone in England at the time. Have you seen Peaky Blinders? Would you be able to find Thomas Shelby by saying that he was carrying cigarettes? Not really. So this eyewitness narrowed down the search to 99% of the men, but at least they narrowed it down to the killer being a man. Jack was not put off whatsoever, that he was not a special enough face to be remembered and struck soon enough. In fact, he struck twice. The next two murders can be told in two lines. Jack killed two women by slitting their throats, but someone would be close to approaching the crime scene every time, so he dashed without truly making sure that whoever found the bodies wouldn't be able to eat for the rest of their days. But his next victim would suffer the consequences of nothing approaching Jack while he was ripping her apart. The fourth victim was a female by the name of Catherine. Her body was located the same way the third victim's was. Get ready for the condition of her body. Her throat had been cut in the classic Jack the Ripper manner. He again made two cuts, 
one of which had cut her tissues down to the bone, and of course, how could he dare to leave without ripping apart her abdomen and pulling out her intestines for some reason? As we warned you, Jack didn't stop here. He mutilated her face, warning you might throw up at this description. He started out by cutting off her nose, then moved on to slashing her cheeks and cutting out her eyes through her eyelids. He even cut off the lobe of her right ear, and it was found stuffed in her pocket. But the most horrifying part is how quickly Jack was able to do all this. The police surgeon stated that all of these cuts combined were made within five minutes. But it is quite a long time to take for killing someone if getting rid of them is your purpose. You might not know this unless you are in the mafia, but when you have to get rid of somebody, you get in, you do the job and get out. You don't stick around for an extra few minutes to mutilate because it makes it very easy for certain people to find you cutting someone's face off. So when you have to kill, you do it like a puma before anyone locates you or, to be honest, even hears you. It was clear that getting rid of these people wasn't Jack's only intention. In fact, he had concerns about taking time to mutilate his victims. This also implies that he wasn't operating on a list of people on whom he had to revenge upon. He was just picking women off the street. This meant that everyone was in danger. This case would provide some leads to the investigators. A part of Catherine's bloody apron was located at the entrance of a common boarding house. There was an interesting inscription directly above the apron that said, The Jews will not be held responsible for anything. So, the message implied that a Jew or multiple Jews were responsible for this murder, but it is unclear whether the writing was intentional or not. It could have been a random writing above her apron. The investigator actually feared riots against Jewish people, so he had the writing washed and erased before dawn when the people would find out about the murder. This murder was not the end. Jack still continued. This would be his last murder, but his most gruesome one. He went out with a bang, truly in a bad way. His final victim was named Mary Jane Kelly, and her mutilated body was found in her room. Her face had been hacked beyond imagination, and there was nothing left of it to identify her with. In the classic Jack manner, her throat and abdomen were hacked. So what was different? Kelly's entire abdomen was empty. Jack had pulled out every single one of her organs. He even took care with placing them. Her kidney was placed under her head. Sections of her leg were cut off and placed under the table. Her heart was never found, literally. Each one of these five murders became more and more horrible, a coup which were interrupted. But we admit there is nothing mentioned here that would justify people saying that Jack committed all of these. We know that Jack was the culprit because of old papers and documents. Jack used to send letters to the police with details that only the murderer could have known. Kelly was Jack's last victim, but women didn't find safety just because Jack stopped. There were four more murders after Kelly. After Kelly, four more women saw their murders. We'll not mention the first two because they are just strangulations and sloppier versions of Jack's modus operandi. The third, however, was way more shocking than Kelly's. So horrifying that we didn't even have a name for the victim. Only a part of her body was found, and it was named the Pynchon Street Torso. The name is fear-inducing. So what was found? Just a decomposing headless, legless torso of a woman in her 30s or early 40s. There were severe bruising around the victim's back and arms, which showed that she was beaten before her death. Her abdomen was mutilated, and she had been dead for a day. The next victim was found in a similar manner. Her head and legs were missing, but torso and arms were present and possibly bruised. Even after this, murder sprees did not truly stop. They were just not as brutal. During this chaos and running around finding bodies, how did no one bump into Jack? It wasn't for the lack of trying. This was a very popular case. Investigators and politicians joined forces to seek out the murderer. Due to the very horrifying nature of the crime, butchers, surgeons, and physicians were suspected. However, they were not successful and the public was getting sick of fearing this man. They started to parole the streets and look out for any suspicious character. It is very much possible that Jack the Ripper volunteered to be part of this committee. Now, in conclusion, 
Jack lived as a free man all his life. Of course, this story has generated hundreds of suspects over the years. But after such a long time with all of our high-tech machines in the forensic science world, is there a chance that we will find out who Jack the Ripper was? Comment down below and we'll pin the best one. Like this video and share it with everyone you know. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. This was Big Facts, Bombified Your Mind, one video at a time. We'll see you in the next video.